We welcome you here to this uh, conference that we have. We call it Love the Bible, Change Africa. Um, I forget, this is our fourth one, fifth one. How many? Fifth one. And, um, you know, it can, it, the, the world has perverted that word love so much as the world continues to pervert and try to distort the truth. What we mean by loving the Bible is actually to um, commit yourself to it, submit to it, acknowledge the Lord's wisdom above our own. I'm not originally a Kenyan, though um, I've been here 13 years. And when I came to Kenya, um, I, 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 I think I can say with a whole heart that it wasn't a desire to um, make everybody else seem wrong and myself seem right. God has his people everywhere. He has them in Kenya. He has them all throughout Africa and the world. But to acknowledge that the uh, doctrines from the West came here many years ago, doctrines that were propagated by such doctrines of demons by, by Kenneth Copeland, and the list goes on and on. And as I came here, quite unexpecting such doctrine of demons, I would speak out against it, um, maybe a little too much at times, but we, we did. And, but from, from the bottom of my heart, it, it broke because lies destroy people's life. False doctrine, doctrines of demons, as the Bible calls it, doesn't sugarcoat it. Doctrines of demons, it destroys people's life. And it's been destroying Africa for a long time since it, and, and, and it came out. Um, I mean, bad doctrine has been around since Satan, but it came out formally um, from the West with such names as Essex Kenyon and Finnis Quimby. Mary Becker Eddy and Essex, K oh, I already said him, and uh, William Branham. And the list goes on and on. I say that quite intentionally. But you can get that terrible doctrine, but there's something in the middle that has an even greater problem, I think, than that does. And that is people who don't believe in that doctrine who simply refuse at their churches, as well-intentioned as they are, not to speak the Bible expositionally. Um, let me just say, expositionally is book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We wrote down here um, from the Word of God as it's written in 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And then Isaiah 28, 10, for precept must be upon precept and Line upon line, well, it repeats itself. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. We remember the words of the Apostle Paul as he spoke to the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20. And he said that the blood of men is not on my hands because I have failed not to teach the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is what? Everything, everything that he had at that time and everything that was being written through him by the Holy Spirit and the other apostles. And quite frankly, as I have seen many people go out and plant churches and, and, and please hear my heart. This isn't that everyone I've talked to is wrong. They're great intentioned people. They do these things. It's like, okay, we're going to plant a church. We need a pastor. We need elders. We need a church secretary. We need a church treasurer. We need a building manager. They don't have a building yet. We, you know, we need a groundskeeper. And they have a list of everything they need in order in their minds 
to accomplish what they think is going to be successful because of those things. Now, certainly a church needs a pastor. And as a church plant is going and the Lord is working, elders will be raised up. But I have long advised people, don't think you need all those things. You need to start from the beginning, middle, and end with the word of God. And then those other things will come as the Lord leads, as the Lord raises up, as the Lord appoints. But we think that success is going to come through these things. We have many diverse people here. We have many pastors here right now. And just to to be blunt, if you left here, if you're not already doing this, and you went back to your church, and you started in Genesis and went through to Revelation, it would be the best thing that has ever happened to your congregation. And let me tell you something. My, my, I am not the best thing that's happened to this congregation at our local church here at Calvary Chapel Elderette. Not even close. Jesus Christ is the best thing that's happened to this congregation. Go give him the word of God. A lot lot of Bible and a little bit of you. I wrote down some things as I was studying other people and then, you know, the word of God, devastating effects of not sitting under expository preaching. Number one, it usurps the authority of God over the soul. When Mr. Storyteller regales you with anecdotes or his own wit instead of God's wisdom, you are hearing him and not God and you will have no power in your life. Number uh, two, If expositional preaching is not happening at our churches, it hinders the work of the Holy Spirit. We remember, probably, John chapter 16. When our Lord Jesus Christ speaks these words, and he says, but now, he's talking to his disciples. He says, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me where I'm going, but because I have said these things, sorrow has filled your heart. And a whole night dominated by love, that is the one rebuke from chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, by the way. In other words, I came down from heaven. I've given everything and I'm about to die and none of you are concerned that I get to return from my father. You're only upset that I said I was going. Because you don't get what you want. I'm not here to give you what you want. I'm here to give you what you need. Is what the Lord is communicating. And what they need is the Holy Spirit. And he goes on. He says, nevertheless, more encouragement he's going to go on with. It's to your advantage. I tell you the truth that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged and I still have many things to say to you. He wants to tell him so much. But you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will come and take care of what is mine and declare it to you. That's the Lord saying, This is the work of the Holy Spirit. He will come and glorify me by speaking my word. 
And when we in our churches do not speak the word expositionally, please, I'm being very specific. I'm not talking about one verse every Sunday, two verses. Going through the Bible like Paul indicated in Acts chapter 20 that the blood of men is not on my hands because I'm teaching the whole counsel of God. It hinders the work of the Holy Spirit when the Bible is not taught in its entirety. Number three, it demonstrates. Now, actually, I want to end on this one. Let me skip. Number three, it prevents the preacher from developing the mind of Christ. The apostle Peter would say, grow in the grace and knowledge of who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. If the preacher is not communicating the word and studying the word, and this is both the effects of the preacher and upon his congregation, the preacher or the congregation won't have the mind of Christ. We need to learn about him to continue to grow in our love for him. That amazing portion of scripture where we get a heaven's view of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ where the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What a glorious mind to be inside of us. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation, taking the form of a slave and coming in the likeness of men, Uh, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And and guys, there's, there's no place where Jesus Christ doesn't rule. He's the Lord of heaven, he's the Lord of earth, and he is the Lord of hell. The demons will bow before him. Satan will be on his knees once again like he was before he was cast down, calling Jesus Lord. The governments of America will be on their knees. The governments of Kenya will be on their knees. But you know, you look at the situation that we're in in Kenya and in governments around the world. And I understand that that our governments are worthy of being criticized. But if the word of God was taught in our churches, in every church across this nation, expositionally, I don't believe the government would look like it does today. Because the government is made up of people who put them into office through voting and compromising because of kiti kidogo. Just a little bit. It's a little money. These politicians can go on the street, hold rallies. They come with like 50 bobs. Have they, has it gone up since? It's still 50? And they're handing them out. They have thousands of them. And we're voting them for 50, Bob? We shouldn't vote for them for 50 billion, Bob. But I'm telling you, this is the rebuke for me too. I lay the blame with the church and the pastors that don't preach his word. It prevents the preacher and the congregation from developing the mind of Christ when the word of God is not taught in its entirety. It cripples corporate worship. It depreciates the priority of personal Bible study. When the word of God is not taught, then people will not thirst for the word of God and they will be ignorant of scripture. It prevents the preacher from being the voice of God on the issues. In the, in the, in the word of God, if the word of God, excuse me, is not the center of attention at our churches, 
Pastors, if the word of God is not the center of attention at our churches, then the pastor almost certainly is. It robs people of their own true source of help. Power. We're talking about power, right? Talk about power all the time in Africa, don't we? Power. They even have this, the way they say it. Power! Be blessed! And they lay hands and they want you to fall down and shake like a chicken. <laughs> and they think that's power. It's manipulation. It's coercion. It's demonic and it's hypnotic. It's not the power of the Holy Spirit to be indecent and out of order. Power. You know, what's interesting when it talks about the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of weakness and acknowledging God's strength in us, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit, that's a dangerous word, isn't it? It's a dangerous word if we desire power for our own glory rather than the glory of he who deserves it and that Jesus Christ only. A lot of guys read the Bible. A lot of people who want to be in ministry, they read the Bible and they're like, oh, I like that power. I want some. Who is it? I'm forgetting. The sons of Sceva? Sceva? That's the right word. Sceva. So they want power, not because they want to glorify Christ. They want it for themselves. Just like so many pastors around the world. Power. They have no power if the word of God, and they're robbing the people of what they really need. They need Christ, not the pastor. They need the, the manifestation of the nature of God as the word of God is preached. It robs people of their only true source of help when the God, word of God is not preached in its entirety. It lies to people about what they truly need. That's another point. Listen. Listen. It, it lies to us. Guys, do we need money in Kenya? It's not a trick question. That was a yes, and you got it right. Do we need money in Kenya? Is that the thing that we need the most? We need holiness. Repentance. Righteousness exalts a nation. Money? Yeah, we could use it. It's nice when we get it, isn't it? But when you have the majority of churches in Kenya saying that that's what we need the most, that's because the word of God is not being taught in its entirety. Because we need a lot more than money. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us and come upon us and give us a thirst for holiness in God's word. And it comes through the preaching of God's word in its entirety. That's what we need. And when the word of God's preached, the pastor gets to pick what the church needs and he is not wise enough to discern what the church needs. It lies to people when the word of God's not taught about what they truly need. It strips the pulpit of power. And you will receive power. Remember the work of the Holy Spirit in John 16? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Judea and Jerusalem and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. If the word of God's not taught, there's no power in the church. There's no power to be a witness. And this last one that I skipped, which I'm so convicted by, even me personally, and I believe in exposition, it demonstrates appalling pride and a lack of submission when the preacher doesn't teach the word expositionally. Appalling pride. Can you imagine... Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, can you imagine if our Lord walked in this? The glory, the beauty of his nature, the person of Christ. And he walked in and I told him to sit in that chair as I gave a little bit more wisdom to the congregation. That's offensive, isn't it? Perish the thought. That's what we're doing, pastors, when you don't teach the word of God. 
You're telling him to sit down so you can communicate with your own cleverness what the congregation needs. Just have a seat. I got this. A little bit more money, a little bit more health, and a little bit more of the pastor at church has destroyed the nation of Kenya. Jesus Christ needs to take his rightful place in all of our churches, and that is on the pulpit. Because when the word of Christ is spoken, Christ is speaking. The man of God has nothing to say except for the word of God. Guys, if you want to hear God speak, read your Bible. If you want to hear God speak audibly, read your Bible out loud. That's why we, all that to say, this wasn't a teaching, all that to say, that's why we came up with the name Love the Bible and Change Africa Conference, because that's what's going to change Africa. Not the wisdom of men, not the cleverness of a preacher, not the gifting of men, not the strength of men, but by the word of God, which is the word of power. Men, if you're a pastor and you don't teach the word of God, I don't want to embarrass anyone Stop. I know you probably teach a verse here, a verse there. Would you do me a favor? Let's have testimonies next year. Pick a book. Pick a book. You could start with Genesis. That's where it all began. Teach it word for word and watch what happens to God's people. And watch how power comes to them. Power and weakness. We've seen it at Calvary Chapel Eldoret, haven't we, church? Calvary Chapel Eldoret, are you here? Haven't we seen it? Haven't we seen God more gracious than man, more kind, more patient, more forgiving? And he's brought a lot of us together when other churches cast us out, hasn't he? Gnomes, Calvary. They've cast us out and God brought us in because he goes after the sheep. And pastor, if you want to go after your sheep, you go after them with the word of God. That's why it's love the Bible and change Africa. That's why we have 10 sessions in the next three days, excuse me, 13 sessions with about 10 hours of preaching because what we're going to do in the middle of a worshiping God in song like we like to do so much in Africa we are going to submit ourselves to the exposition of God's word. Hallelujah.